at Anglolink and this is our sixth video in our series Learn the Tenses. In the first five videos we've looked at some present and past tenses which I hope you've enjoyed and learned a lot from and now it's time to move on to the future tenses and today we'll begin with will and going to. So when you're ready we can begin. Right, future simple and going to future. Let's look at formulation first. Now, future simple is really the simplest tense in English. Just add will to your pronoun and then the infinitive. So, I'll do it. You'll do it. He'll do it. She'll do it. It'll do it. You'll do it. We'll do it. And finally, they'll do it. You notice that will contracts to l. Let's look at the formulation of the going to future. For going to future, you simply conjugate the verb to be, then add going to, and then the infinitive. Let's have a look. I'm going to do it. You're going to do it. He's going to do it. She's going to do it. It's going to do it. You're going to do it. We're going to do it. And finally, they're going to do it. Let's move on to usage now. Future simple. Future simple has two main usages. The first one is to express a possibility in the future. And in this case, we usually put in an expression of possibility in our sentence. Expressions such as, I hope, I think, maybe, probably. Let's look at some examples. It'll probably rain tonight. I hope he'll pass his test. If we don't hurry, we'll miss our flight. The second usage of the future sample tense is when you make a decision at the time of speaking. This usually happens in a dialogue. Someone says something or asks you to do something and you react. And when you react, you use the future simple. Let's look at examples. Someone says, it's terribly cold in this room. And you decide at that moment to put the heater on for them. You use the future simple. I'll put the heater on for you. Someone calls and says, may I speak to Mr. Rossi, please? You decide that you'll put them through to Mr. Rossi. And you'll say, Hold on, I'll put you through. Let's look at another example. Someone says to you, I'd love to see the town. Having heard this, you decide to show them around. So you say, Really? OK, I'll show you around. Now, let's look at the usage of the going to future. Again, there are two main usages. The first one is to indicate some form of certainty for the future, something that's certain to happen. Let's look at some examples. 
Look at those black clouds. It's going to rain any minute. He has studied really hard. He's definitely going to pass his test. The roads are all blocked. We're going to miss our flight. Let's look at the second usage of the going to future. When you talk about a decision or a plan you have made before the time of speaking. For example, I'm cold. I'm going to put the heater on. Mr. Rossi isn't here. I'm going to put you through to his assistant. I know you want to see the town. I'm going to show you around. Let's compare the two tenses for each usage. Let's look at the first usages of will and going to. As you will remember, will was to express a possibility. And going to was to express certainty. Let's compare the examples. It'll probably rain tonight. We're not sure. Compare that with, look at those black clouds, it's going to rain any minute, it's certain, there is no doubt. The next example was, I hope he'll pass his test, but I'm not sure. Compare that with, he has studied really hard. He is definitely going to pass his test. The word definitely underlines the certainty in this tense. And the final example was, if we don't hurry, we'll miss our flight. There is a possibility of missing your flight. However, if the roads are all blocked, and there is certainty that you will miss your flight, he will say, we're going to miss our flight. There's no doubt. Let's look at the second usages of the two tenses and compare them. Will was for a decision at the time of speaking, whereas going to was for a decision made before the time of speaking. Let's compare the examples. In the dialogue, someone said, it's terribly cold in this room. And your reaction was, I'll put the heater on for you. Whereas if you're cold yourself, and you decide to put the heater on, then you can tell the listener, I'm cold. I'm going to put the heater on. You made this decision before you spoke to him or her. Our second example was, on the phone, someone said, May I speak to Mr. Rossi, please? And you decided to connect them, so you said, Hold on, I'll put you through. But Mr. Rossi wasn't there, so you decided that you would put them through to his assistant. And you told them so. Mr. Rossi isn't here. I'm going to put you through to his assistant. And our final example was, someone said, I'd love to see the town. You reacted in the dialogue by saying, really? Okay, I'll show you around. Whereas in the going to example, you already knew that they wanted to see the town and you had decided to show them around. So you said, 
I know you want to see the town. I'm going to show you around. Well, that should have clarified the differences between will and going to for you. Before we move on, I'd just like to point out two words that you will come across quite often. One is shall and the other is gonna. Now, shall is a very formal word if used for the future tense. It goes with the pronouns I and we. But if you use it, you will sound quite formal. You will be correct, but formal. So you might hear or you might say in a formal situation, instead of I'll see you later, you can say I shall see you later. We'll discuss this tomorrow. If you want to sound more formal, you could say, we shall discuss this tomorrow. Gonna is the opposite. It's a very informal expression and it's just a contracted form of going to. It's only appropriate in informal spoken contexts. So instead of, I'm going to watch a film tonight, you could say, or you could hear, I'm going to watch a film tonight. They're going to buy a new car. In an informal situation, you might hear, they're going to buy a new car. Right then, let's look at the common mistakes. The most common mistake is using will instead of going to and vice versa. So we're going to do an exercise. We're going to look at four situations and get you to decide which tense would be better. Let's look at the first example and you will decide which answer, which reaction sounds better. Someone says I'm sorry, I can't hear you. Would you say, OK, I'll speak louder? Or would you say, OK, I'm going to speak louder? Take a moment to choose your answer. And then we'll look at the correct answer. That's right. The correct answer is A. You're making this decision at the time of speaking. I'm sorry, I can't hear you. OK, I'll speak louder. Let's look at our second example. Someone asks you, what have you planned for the weekend? Now, you don't have any plans. What should you say? Nothing, I'll probably stay home. Or, nothing, I'm probably going to stay home. Take a moment to choose the sentence that sounds better to you. Correct. The answer is A. Nothing, I'll probably stay home. Because you are reacting to the question and deciding at the time of speaking to stay home. You had no plans or decisions before you were asked. Let's move on to our third example. Someone asks you, are you sure about this? Yes, I know it'll work. Or, yes, I know it's going to work. Take a moment to choose your answer. Correct. B. Yes, I know it's going to work. Because you're sure about it. You know. And our last example. Someone asks you, what have you decided about your flat? And you have a decision. Will you say, we'll sell it? Or will you say, we're going to sell it.
correct. We're going to sell it because you've already decided before you were asked that question. Right then, I hope you've enjoyed this video and as you know, for more information, to reread the explanations and to do some exercises, you can go to our website angling.com. Thank you for watching and I do look forward to seeing you in our next video. Bye now.